We'd like to remind our listeners that our program is available on our podcast. Use your favorite podcast app and go to the App Store and look for Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy. And we'd appreciate if you'd subscribe. WHBC AM Ken News Talk 1480 WHBC. Black history is important to me because I have to remember where I came from and I have to remember who came before me. Because you have to look at the things that Martin Luther King Jr., Rosa Parks, and Malcolm X did for us black people. Like family, WHBC. We'd like to remind our listeners that our program is available on our podcast. Use your favorite podcast app and go to the App Store and look for Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy. And we'd appreciate if you'd subscribe. The following program is sponsored by the Medicine Center Pharmacies. You're listening to News Talk 1480 WHBC and Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy. Now here's your host, Paul White. Good morning and welcome to Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy. I'm your pharmacist, Paul White. We're very glad you joined us. Before we begin, I'd like to thank our sponsor, Studio Arts and Glass, Cleveland Clinic, Mercy Hospital, and of course, our socially distant technical producer, J.D. DeAngelis. Today, Brad and I are broadcasting from our administrative offices, and our guests are Dan Harvey, physician assistant, and Chrissy Coffey, nurse practitioner with Cleveland Clinic Mercy Cardiovascular Institute. Good morning, Dan and Christy, and welcome to the show. Good morning, Paul. Thanks for having us. It is February, American Heart Month, a time when the nation spotlights heart disease, the number one killer of Americans. President Lyndon B. Johnson, among millions of people in the country who had heart attacks, issued the first proclamation in 1964. Since then, U.S. presidents have annually declared February American Heart Month. This year, the federally designated event is more important due to the impact of the coronavirus on the public heart health, including the potential harmful effects on the heart and vascular system. According to recent research, also during the COVID-19 pandemic, many people have delayed or avoided going to hospitals for heart attacks and strokes, netting poorer outcomes for, and prompting for the American Heart Association to create Don't Die of Doubt a national awareness campaign that reminds people that hospitals are the safest place to go when you have symptoms. This morning, we're going to talk with Dan and Christy about heart health. We'd like to remind our listeners that you can subscribe to our podcast. It's available in your favorite podcast app. Just look for Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy and please subscribe. So, Dan, welcome back to the show. Please tell us a little bit about yourself and introduce yourself again to our listeners. All right. Thanks, Paul. Uh, my name is Dan Harvey. I'm a physician assistant here at Cleveland Clinic uh, Mercy Cardiovascular Institute. Um, I was born and raised right here in Stark County and graduated from Perry High School. Go Panthers. Um, I have a degree in respiratory therapy. Um, I got my uh, uh, degree in physician assistant studies through Tri-C in Cleveland. And I obtained my master's degree through tri- uh, AT Still in Arizona. Um, I've been a PA since 2003 with uh, 15 years of ER experience and uh, going on three years of cardiology experience here at uh, Cleveland Clinic Mercy Hospital. So, Christy, welcome to the show. This is your first time around. Um, please tell us a little bit about yourself and introduce yourself to our listeners. Um, I'm Christy. I'm one of the nurse practitioners that works at Cleveland Clinic Mercy Cardiovascular Institute. Sorry, that's a new one for us. We just merged with them. Um, I've been with the group since October of 2019 when I moved here from Chicago, born and raised, and that's where I got all my training. Um, I worked previously at the University of Chicago, and got all my nursing training there, and got um, my master's from Chamberlain University, and then came to, to Ohio to hang out with Dan. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that's probably, the weather's probably better here, I think. I don't know. It is, yeah. <laughs> okay. I know it's awful cold here, so for our listeners, we might... No, no. Tell us a little bit about the Cleveland Clinic Mercy Cardiovascular Institute. Um, Cleveland Clinic Mercy Cardiovascular Institute um, is located right here at Mercy Hospital, uh, Suite 101. Um, it's easily accessible. Uh, uh, it's wheelchair accessible. It's right inside the door when you come out of the parking deck uh, across from uh, the shop and the pharmacy. Um, we have seven board-certified cardiologists. So we have two uh, cardiothoracic surgeons, and uh, 13 advanced practice providers, a combination of nurse practitioners and uh, physician assistants. Um, our offices are open from 8 to 4.30, Monday through Friday. However, now with the new 24-7 line, uh, provider, patients will now have access to their provider 
24 hours a day, seven days a week when they have questions outside of normal business hours. Uh, that's an exclusive uh, service to uh, Mercy Cardiovascular Institute patients. So um, what are both of your roles with, with Mercy's Cardiovascular Institute and cardiac services? Uh, I guess I'll go first. Uh, my role uh, as a lead advanced practice uh, provider, um, basically I try to keep our schedule straight. I try to solve problems on a day-to-day basis. Um, I do see patients in the hospital, uh, do consults, follow-ups. Um, I see patients in the office in collaboration with Dr. Jones. Um, that's really a full-service uh, cardiology practice that we provide here at the hospital. And I also work in the hospital, and then I work, work in the office with Dr. Patel. So why Cleveland Clinic Mercy Hospital? What drew you to the hospital? And, and you were both there before the merger, I, I guess. So. Yes, that's correct. I've actually was here through the Columbia merger a oh, long time ago. Oh, so, yeah, okay. Um, well, when I was going through respiratory therapy, going through school, uh, I was exposed to multiple hospitals throughout Northeast Ohio. And uh, the one thing that attracted me most about uh, Cleveland Clinic Mercy Hospital is the culture. Uh, not only how well the patients are treated, uh, the quality care that they get, uh, but it's also how uh, the staff treat one another, how the providers treat the staff. Um, it's really just a a culture that is unique to uh, Mercy Hospital. Um, it may be uh, part of the Catholic heritage, I'm not sure, but it is definitely a, a different hospital. Um, and that's what draw me drew me into uh, Mercy. I've been here for going on 25 years now. Oh. <laughs> And you, Chris? Um, I chose Mercy. I, I, like I said, I'm from Chicago, so I was newer to the Ohio area. Um, but I was on my job hunt, and I wanted to stay in cardiac, and I got this job position, and I interviewed for it, and I knew I wanted to come to Mercy because it's a small community hospital. I've really only worked at larger teaching institutions, but there's something really special about working at a smaller institution. It's like you're working with a big family. Also, working with a large group of advanced practice was really important to me as well. All right, so how about we dive in and start talking about heart month, and let's talk about um, what are some of the preventable heart diseases, heart disease conditions that people can influence? So when we start talking about preventable heart disease conditions, we're talking about preventable or uh, modifiable conditions uh, or risk factors. So um, probably one of the most prominent uh, uh, risk factors for heart disease is smoking, cigarette smoking, pipes, tobacco, those things. Um, in addition to smoking, you have uh, elevated cholesterol, the high, low-density lipoprotein, or LDL, or the bad cholesterol. Um, we also see patients with low, high-density lipoproteins, or the uh, low numbers for the HDL can also be at risk. Um, hypertension is a big risk factor, uh, especially when it's uncontrolled. Uh, physical inactivity uh, you know, as Americans, we just don't get enough exercise on a day-to-day basis. Um, obesity, uh, which also is uh, a U.S. issue. Um, uncontrolled diabetes um, and uh, uncontrolled stress in your life, uh, whether it be work or home. Um, a poor diet, which goes along with the obesity. And then excessive alcohol use. Uh, more than one drink a day is not recommended. Uh, it does increase cardiovascular risk. Hmm. Well, those are a lot of things we certainly can control. What about some of the non-controllable or non-preventable heart disease conditions? So when we talk about uncontrolled risk factors, uh, these are mostly uh, genetic predominance. Um, Your gender, you really can't do anything about, you know, the XY chromosome you're born with. Uh, Males are at higher risk, but, you know, when women... Uh, reach postmenopausal stage, they catch up in the uh, cardiovascular risk. Uh, advancing age, we can't do anything about time. Um, and the older we get, the more time, uh, you know, the more disease that progresses. That's just a normal uh, issue. Uh, family history of heart disease, you can't do anything about your mom or dad or the genetics they've, been, they've given you. Um, race um, has been identified as a significant risk factor. Uh, rates of cardiovascular disease are significantly higher in the African-American population, uh, the American Indian population, um, 
and the Hispanic population uh, when compared to uh, the Caucasian race. Uh, here in Stark County, we do have a significant uh, Hispanic population, and uh, we really just don't see enough uh, cardiovascular care coming their way. That's one thing that we really need to improve on. Is there a way for a person to make an impact on non-preventable heart disease conditions? Um, there really is no way to change your genetics, and you really can't alter time. So what we do is we spend most of our time addressing the modifiable uh, conditions, you know, uh, smoking cessation, weight loss, uh, increasing activity, exercising five times a week uh, for an hour a day. Um, all the things that you can do uh, to help your cardiovascular health is where we kind of focus. Uh, we really can't do anything about time and genetics. Okay. What about, um, how about we cover with the listeners what some of the typical signs or symptoms of a heart attack are? So uh, everybody's different, obviously. Um, most common presenting symptom is pain, um, but we all perceive pain differently. So some patients may come in complaining of crushing chest pain. Uh, they may just have tightness in their chest or a heaviness uh, or fullness. Um, sometimes they describe pressure or squeezing. Uh, many times it will uh, radiate to other parts of their body. It'll go into their neck, their jaw, their teeth, the shoulders, down the arms. Uh, sometimes they just think that they have bad indigestion, um, burping, belching, um, a little bit of nausea, those things. Um, many times they'll complain of uh, dyspnea or a shortness of breath. Um, they'll feel sometimes lightheaded dizzy, may try to pass out, they'll get sweaty. Uh, a overall general weakness is not uncommon. Sometimes they will feel heart racing or palpitations. Uh, these things are pretty much common, um, but they vary uh, depending on the patient. And like we say every day is the patients don't, you know, their, their heart attack doesn't read the book, so they're not going to present with the exact same symptoms. So uh, everybody has to pay attention to their own symptoms and uh, address it accordingly. So how about differences between men and women in that spirit? What about, um, you know, I've, I've had an experience where I had pericarditis years ago and it was, it's a, it's a humbling experience to go through some of those symptoms and worry what's going on. And, you know, it, I thought it was telling in the opening segment when we talked about people that maybe are afraid to go to the hospital because of COVID right now and are putting off because they might have a symptom that concerns them, but they let it go. So touch on how symptoms could be different for men to women and um, how important it is not to ignore them. So men and women do have different symptoms and women actually present can present differently than men. Um, we see sometimes like extreme fatigue in women. That's like new onset um, also, like women do present with like abdominal pain or um, nausea that can kind of mimic heartburn. And that's something that women kind of postpone because they're like, oh, I just took some Pepsi, I'm good to go. But that it can be a symptom, shortness of breath, sweating, pain in the neck, back, and jaw. Women don't typically always present with chest pain. In fact, we see a lot of women come in that are like, I was feeling a little short of breath. And then we take an EKG and they're having a full-blown heart attack. So they do present a lot differently than men. Tell you what, folks, we're going to take a break now. You're listening to Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy. You're listening to Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy and your hosts, pharmacists Paul White and Brad White. Remember, you can get more information right now by visiting MedShopRx.com. That's M-E-D-S-H-O-P-R-X.com. We'll be back with more of Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy in just a moment. Hi, Paul White from the Medicine Center Pharmacy. From 1976 to the new year, 2020, we've been part of the Canton community. This year, we celebrate 44 years of service. Thank you for your business and continued support of the Medicine Center Pharmacies. A lot has changed in the pharmacy world over the past 44 years, but one thing hasn't, our commitment to your health. Stop by your local Medicine Center Pharmacy in Canton, Louisville, Minerva, or New Philadelphia, where wellness begins. Cleveland Clinic Mercy Hospital wants you to know we are here for you literally and virtually. 
For our patient safety, Mercy is providing virtual doctor appointments from the comfort of your home. This service is available for Stat Care Urgent Care, seven days a week, and Mercy Primary Care, Monday through Friday. See our website at cantonmercy.org slash telehealth for office and appointment hours. Mercy Telehealth visits are simple, convenient, and can be utilized by anyone who has access to a smartphone, tablet, or computer. Our Mercy representatives are ready and happy to assist you. So whether you are in need of urgent care for minor illnesses and injuries or would like a one-on-one with a Mercy primary care physician, Mercy is here for you. Cleveland Clinic Mercy Hospital telehealth appointments. Learn more at cantonmercy.org slash telehealth. That's cantonmercy.org slash telehealth. Online appointments are considered medical services and will be billed to your insurance. Copays and deductibles apply. Saving money is awesome. Saving money on items you actually use? Fantastic. Hi, Paul White for the Half Off and Out by Store in Louisville. If you think you'll find the same low prices, huge variety, or great customer service at any other store, you'd be wrong. Stop into our store in Louisville and see what great deals we have. Follow us on our Facebook page at Half Off Store to see super specials. Why pay full price? Come in and experience the Half Off and Out by Store in Louisville, next to the Medicine Center Pharmacy. Yes, we are open. We are open. The Medicine Center Pharmacies and the Half Off and Out by Store in Louisville are open. Some great services are still in play, our drive through windows, curb service, and our enhanced delivery service. Our stores are fully inventoried and fully staffed for your convenience. 13 pharmacists to help you with your medications and over-the-counter products. So don't hesitate to visit us or use one of our services. Medicine Center Pharmacies in Canton, Louisville, New Philadelphia, and Minerva. You're listening to News Talk 1480 WHBC and Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy. Now here's your host, Paul White. Welcome back to Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy. Brad and I are discussing heart health with Dan Harvey and Christy Coffey, Cleveland Clinic Mercy Cardiovascular Institute. Why are women more likely to die from a heart attack than men? Um, well, men are at a greater risk of having a heart attack. Women are more likely to die from a heart attack. And there's actually been quite a few research studies have been done on this subject. But like I mentioned previously, um, women women's symptoms can present so differently and they can often be mistaken as like a different condition. Um, it's also been thought that women have untreated risk factors such as high blood pressure, diabetes. Um, so they go untreated, which puts them at a greater risk of having death after a heart attack. And women often forget to take care of themselves because they're busy taking care of a family. Paul, like Chrissy had said before, 50% of women do not present with chest pain. So they have other symptoms, indigestion, shortness of breath, generalized fatigue. And they ignore those symptoms for longer than they should. So by standard of care, we have 90 minutes to get an artery open uh, when the patient's having a heart attack, right? So you can just think if you're sitting at home for you know, a couple of days thinking, oh, this heartburn is not going away. Your your heart is continuing to suffer damage because it's not getting blood flow and oxygen. So that I think that adds uh, a level of uh, risk for females uh, and likely contributes to uh, why they're more likely to uh, pass from a heart attack than males do. So, well, not physically, but, but men and women are Human beings, okay? Is it the hormone difference that this is? Yeah, certainly, um, and that's what I mentioned before, is prior to menopause, um, we think that the hormones that they do have are cardioprotective to some extent. Mm -hmm. And then once they do meet uh, menopause age, uh, they go through the change of life, then they don't have that protective barrier anymore, and they Mm -hmm. rapidly catch up. They put plaque in their arteries where they didn't have previously. So uh, the rate of disease progression uh, accelerates uh, once they hit postmenopause. Are there any studies on, on smoking? Uh, in other words, more women smoke by percentage than men, or don't we know that stuff? I don't know that answer, to be honest, Paul. Okay. It just, it just seems like it seems like I see more women smoking than I've seen in a long time. Or yeah, you know, the, now the trend is uh, vaping. And we really don't know the long-term effects of vaping. We certainly see uh, popcorn lung uh, from uh, vaping, you know, the Mm -hmm. early emphysema changes. um, And uh, we really just don't know the cardiovascular risk associated with that. What's popcorn lung? I mean, Um, you 
in the as long as you have alveoli, which are little sacs that help the, with the air exchange. And over when somebody gets emphysema, this changes. They break down these little alveoli instead of making little balloons, which have a bigger surface area. You get one big balloon that has actually much less surface area to mm. exchange oxygen with the blood that's going around there. So it, when you look on an X-ray, it looks like a, like a popcorn lung. Hmm. What about ethnicity? How does that play a role in the rate and severity of cardiovascular diseases? Yeah, as I mentioned earlier, Paul, uh, ethnicity certainly plays uh, uh, a big role uh, in cardiovascular health. Um, as a matter of fact, the death rates of African Americans are 30, 33% higher uh, than comparable uh, rates in Caucasians. Um, they're much more likely to have a uh, stroke uh, than Caucasians. Um, African, I'm sorry, American Indians and Hispanics also follow similar uh, increased percentage, but at a lesser rate. So we have to ask ourselves, why is this an issue? So as we talked before, genetics certainly plays an issue into this, but then we think it's likely multifactorial that uh, access to good quality care is probably an issue. Um, uh, the economic status of the patients, you know, they may just not have the insurance uh, available to them to seek medical care. Um, and certainly with the Hispanic population, uh, communication is a barrier. If they, you know, if they don't speak good English, uh, they don't realize that we have interpreters that will come in and help them. Um, so they don't really seek that uh, medical care that they uh, so desperately need. Hmm. Interesting. So we probably hit this before, but who is the greatest risk for heart attacks? Well, yeah, we did kind of hit this before, but it's all the people that have the risk factors, right? The family history, diabetes, male gender, tobacco abuse, obesity, high blood pressure, cholesterol. But as healthcare providers, we also use something called an ASCVD risk score. And that's basically uh, your 10-year risk of having a cardiovascular problem, such as a heart attack or a stroke. And basically, the lower the score is, the better off you are. We can just recommend like lifestyle changes such as weight loss and diet and exercise. Um, but the higher the score goes, the more we start thinking about adding a statin to help lower your cholesterol, to help start preventing any cardiovascular disease that could potentially happen. Hmm. So uh, there's really no solution for, uh, say, the Spanish or, 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 or the African-American uh, other than drug therapy. Um, obviously, we can't fix this because of, of the issues with their ethnicity. So what's the solution? Is there any? Um, patient education, uh, getting information to uh, the patients, just like your radio show is doing right now. Um, we need to let the, the community know that we are here for them. Uh, they just need to reach out to this. They need to talk to their primary care provider. And if they do have cardiovascular risk or having cardiac symptoms, uh, they can... Uh, get an appointment scheduled with one of our cardiologists or one of the advanced practice here at Mercy uh, Cleveland Clinic Mercy Medical Center. Um, the uh, patient education is the, the biggest thing. You know, um, they they don't know. Sometimes they don't know what their blood pressure is. You know, if they're they're going around with uncontrolled hypertension or diabetes that they've never been tested for, certainly over time these things are. Uh, uh, developing that cardiovascular risk that they uh, don't know about. Okay, time for the news. You're listening to Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy. Brad and I are discussing heart health with Dan Harvey and Christy Coffey from Cleveland Clinic Mercy Hospital Cardiovascular Institute. You're listening to Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy and your hosts, pharmacists Paul White and Brad White. Remember, you can get more information right now by visiting MedShopRx.com. That's M-E-D-S-H-O-P-R-X.com. We'll be back with more of Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy in just a moment. Cleveland Clinic Mercy Hospital wants you to know we are here for you literally and virtually. For our patient's safety, Mercy is providing virtual doctor appointments from the comfort of your home. This service is available for stat care urgent care seven days a week 
and Mercy Primary Care, Monday through Friday. See our website at cantonmercy.org slash telehealth for office and appointment hours. Mercy Telehealth visits are simple, convenient, and can be utilized by anyone who has access to a smartphone, tablet, or computer. Our Mercy representatives are ready and happy to assist you. So whether you are in need of urgent care for minor illnesses and injuries or would like a one-on-one with a Mercy primary care physician, Mercy is here for you. Cleveland Clinic Mercy Hospital telehealth appointments. Learn more at cantonmercy.org slash telehealth. That's cantonmercy.org slash telehealth. Online appointments are considered medical services and will be billed to your insurance. Copays and deductibles apply. Is CBD oil right for you? That may seem like a simple question, but the answers don't come from a convenience food store or a mall kiosk. Your medicine center pharmacist is the most accessible healthcare professional. Our pharmacists have been trained to provide expert CBD oil information to tailor therapies like CBD capsules, tinctures, lotions, and ointments to your particular need. We have the highest quality, organic, Colorado-grown, non-GMO, full-spectrum CBD oil products. Visit the medicine center pharmacies in Canton, Louisville, Minerva, or New Philadelphia. It's time to get out of the house and take a class. Studio Arts and Glass offers, of course, stained glass classes, but much, much more. Fuse glass snowflakes or make a heart for your valentine. Glass terrarium eggs or painted wine glasses. Gift shops open Monday through Saturday from 10 to 6. Call for class times or studioartsandglass.com. Located on 77 in Apple Grove in North Canton. Hi, Paul White from the Medicine Center Pharmacy. In these difficult times, please stay calm and make sure your medical and health care supplies are well stocked. Have Kleenex, pain relievers, fever reducers such as Tylenol and cough syrup like Robitussin, Dayquil, cough drops and maybe a humidifier. And make sure you take a good multivitamin like Linus Pauling Super Multivitamins. Also, you might get a good probiotic and make sure that you get plenty of rest and plenty of nutritious food. The Medicine Center Pharmacy in Canton, Louisville, Minerva, and New Philadelphia. You're listening to News Talk 1480 WHBC and Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy. Now here's your host, Paul White. Okay, folks, we're back with Health Matters from the Medicine Center Pharmacy. It is American Heart Month, and we've got a lot more to cover this morning, so let's get back to the show. One of the things that our pharmacists at the Medicine Center find themselves providing a lot of education for is patients that have diabetes. Can you touch on the link between diabetes and heart disease? Sure. So diabetes damages your blood vessels in your body, and we call that microvascular trauma. And basically, this causes your heart to have to work harder while also causing damage to the vessels in the heart itself, putting you at risk of having a heart attack. Um, That's why prevention of diabetes and good control of your diabetes is so imperative because it can cause such bad cardiovascular disease. And actually, um, the number one death in patients with diabetes is cardiovascular disease. So that's why you kind of have to expand your care team sometimes if you have really bad um, diabetes and see an endocrinologist and really get them on board to help you get better control um, because it can cause such damage to your blood vessels. Um, we, in the office, I'm constantly on patients if their blood, if their hemoglobin A1C is greater than seven, I'm like, you gotta get better control. Just follow up with your PCP, follow up with your endocrinologist. You have to get better control, change your diet, change your lifestyle because there's so, it plays so many important roles on your body. First, it's your kidneys, then your heart, then you you get neuropathy. So it really does play a huge role in just overall wellness. So we recommend um, really good control or prevention of your diabetes. You know, I, I sat well, on the I sat on the board of Juvenile Diabetes Foundation a local chapter uh, quite a few years ago, and I remember Juvenile Diabetes Foundation uh, had a goal to find a cure for diabetes by the year two thousand. And uh, I don't know, you know, I'm, I, I guess. I'm not. I'm going to not going to say that I'm not seeing any progress, but it, it apparently is extremely complex and, and extremely difficult to come up with a solution. Uh, are we making any headway past those 20 years ago? Uh, I don't think there's a cure anytime soon. Now we have made progress on uh, blood monitoring. Um, we have uh, like implantable. Uh, devices now that uh, and pods that administer insulin um, that 
uh, Bluetooth to your phone. So you know instantly what your blood glucose is. And then you can uh, put in your, your carbs and put in your information and uh, the device will automatically administer uh, insulin, you know, uh, and that's huge progress. Um, but, uh, you know, again, this all goes back to not only medication, but lifestyle, um, you know, living a healthy lifestyle, getting the exercise you need, um, keeping your weight uh, appropriate that, you know, obviously this, these things are all going to help with uh, controlling your diabetes in addition to medication, which are ultimately those are very important as well. But, you know, with patients that um, have diabetes, one of the discussions we'll have in the pharmacy is, is it may be a, the goal may be a preventative conversation, much like you touched on keeping your A1C below seven. Um, oftentimes it's adding a statin medication to help prevent cholesterol levels and plaque in the arteries from getting out of control before it happens. Do you have any tips or, or, or comments that you can provide that you talk with patients that, you know, every day we see patients in the pharmacy that are like, well, my cholesterol is fine. I don't need this drug. I, you know, I, I don't feel any different. It's almost like high blood pressure when you don't, feel you have high cholesterol, or maybe you're not monitoring your diabetes the way you should unless you see that A1C, um, it's sometimes difficult for patients to reconcile that it's really important, like you said, to make some lifestyle changes when they don't really have the desire to do so. Managing your cholesterol levels, I, I get it. You know, I just see it a lot in the office. I'm just going to start with patient education and how much they just don't understand things. And we talk about lifestyle changes all the time to patients like exercise and eat right. And, and they look at you like, well, I have one less piece of bread a day because they really just don't understand how important or what diet changes are. So sometimes I'll even recommend patients see a nutritionist so they can get a better grasp on like how they're supposed to eat. Um, and, you know, with the weather and with COVID and people not being able to go to the gym and exercise, I've even just been saying, just go to your mailbox an extra time a day when you don't have to get the mail, just to get some extra movement in your day. Um, but as far as like, yeah, we have patients all the time that say, I don't have high blood pressure because I take a uh, high blood pressure medication. So I don't have it anymore. Um, it's the same with cholesterol. Like they may, they just don't understand how, you know, it causes plaque and we're just trying to prevent that. So that comes back to us and back to nursing and back to pharmacists because we all work so well together to just educate the patients. And sometimes, you know, patients don't get it upon discharge, but this is why we're putting this on them. And so it is teaching and reteaching and teaching again until they understand why they need to be on these medications and why they need to make these changes. So when they come to you at the pharmacy and they say, I don't know why I'm on this, we really appreciate that you guys also take, take head there and say, well, this is why. And you guys are also really educated and know why they need to be on it as well. And yeah, that's a like discussion... Go yeah. ahead. Go ahead. So, you know, like we're talking, this is a team approach to uh, healthcare in general. Um, as Chrissy was saying, it's hard to tell the patients, you know, you need to watch your diet. You know, here at Cleveland Clinic Mercy Hospital, we also do have dietitians who can um, see the patients, uh, particularly when they're in the hospital. And diabetic education, particularly in the patients with cardiovascular disease, is uh, it's huge. It's it's uh, very impactful. Um, and, you know, when we go after patients had a heart attack, we have cardiac rehabilitation and all these things. You know, like you said, a lot of these things are intangible to patients. They, they have high blood pressure, but they don't feel bad. They have elevated cholesterol, but they don't feel bad. So to get them to take their medications on a daily basis is a challenge. So it really takes a lot of education uh, to explain to the patients that these are silent killers that are occurring in your body. They're causing damage, you know, while you're sleeping, while you're awake. You just don't feel it, but it's still causing damage to your body. And we have to, we have to mitigate those risks. You know, one of the conversations we'll have to elaborate on that is, is that frequently we hear patients come in and they're like, well, the doctor wants me to take another pill. And I don't think that it's, we, we try to have a conversation that your doctor is not out to get you on as many pills as you want. They're trying to provide you with tools to offset those maybe genetic um, anomalies or maybe some lifestyle choices that you didn't know you made that are that have put you at odds. So, you know, whether it's something for high blood pressure or something for high cholesterol, all those things have a 
a reason, and it's not to make you take three or four or five medications a day. And, and that's one of the conversations we try to have is to help them understand that while taking something for like high cholesterol isn't a license to eat, it's also something that hopefully can help put you at better odds going forward for your future. Um, and it's, I, I think one of the things we struggle with in the pharmacy, much like you do in your practice, um, is patients don't know what, what they don't know. So we all think we know how to eat. We all think we know how to go to the grocery and shop. But when you start to like look at the nutrition in the food you eat or maybe how much exercise you really get per day, um, you know, whether you've got uh, a fancy Apple watch that tracks every movement you make or you just record how many calories you eat a day, it's very eye opening when you start to look at what you do. So um, talk to us, talk to your pharmacists. Talk to your nurses. Talk to your doctors. Um, don't be afraid to ask questions um, because it could really help you understand better how to manage your condition. So, we should talk about your nurses' line or the or the twenty four seven line. I, I think that's a very interesting concept because I know when patients come into the pharmacy at five or six o'clock at night, they're like, "Well, my doctor's gone until Monday. I, I don't know what to do. What do I do?" So we often help triage, but how can how can that help give more access and more answers to patients? Sure. The 24-7 access line is uh, exclusive to uh, Cleveland Clinic Mercy Cardiovascular Institute patients. Uh, basically, it's, uh, it's we're a phone call away. Uh, there's a uh, number, uh, 234-203-3535, uh, that will... Uh, call a portable phone that's carried by um, an advanced practice provider, nurse practitioner, or a PA, um, if it's after hours. If it's office hours, this number is forwarded to uh, the office, and then we try to get you in touch with your uh, cardiologist. Uh, but after hours, uh, this does go to a portable line. Now, <laughs> it, it has to be understood, we are going through the hospital seeing consults and seeing patients, so we may not pick up directly, but it'll go to voicemail, and we will call you back. Um, alternatively, and this is actually preferred, there is a, a form uh, which is on the Internet. It's on cantonmercy.org under the Mercy Cardiovascular Institute uh, tab that the patient can fill out. They put their name in there. They put their provider, um, and they put their last office visit if they know it. And then they put a little brief summary of why they're uh, trying to get in touch with somebody. So this is then sent to a, a laptop that we're carrying around with us as well. And then... We can pull up the patient's chart. We can gather information as, as about their past medical history, the medications they take, their allergies, et cetera. We can see what their issue is, and then we can call the patient back to give them guidance. Um, it it's really is a unique opportunity uh, for our patients at uh, the Cardiovascular Institute. I don't want to minimize how important that is, but it almost sounds like a, a Twitter or a something like that for your patient so that it's more of a instantaneous type communication. Um, and I think that's pretty neat given the technology we have available now. Um, so I'm sure that that could significantly cut down the uh, time it takes to get care for someone if they're on the fence about getting care. Right, right. So yeah, we have to reach out. We have to utilize all these technologies we have available to us. You know, COVID-19, uh, this one of the unfortunate uh, uh, side effects of COVID-19. We've, we've really embraced telehealth um, and other ways to stay in contact with our patients. Uh, the 24-7 line is just an extension of that, uh, and it's going to be a very valuable tool, uh, and it, uh, it should probably be very valued by uh, the patients at MCI. Okay, folks, our final break is here. You're listening to Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy. You're listening to Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy and your hosts, pharmacists Paul White and Brad White. We'll be back with more of Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy in just a moment. Are you tired of spending time sorting your medication? Hi, pharmacist Paul White for the Medicine Center Pharmacy. Whether you are a caregiver or personally take medications, our pill packets will change how you take your medication forever. Instead of multiple pill bottles, you want to receive one easy dispensing box that contains all of your medications in individual packets. Organized by date, time, with instructions clearly labeled, it's simple, convenient, and safe. Call or stop by your local Medicine Center Pharmacies in Canton, Louisville, Minerva, and New Philadelphia, where wellness begins. Saving money is awesome. Saving money on items you actually use? Fantastic. Hi, Paul White for the Half Off and Out by Store in Louisville. If you think you'll find the same low prices, huge variety, 
or great customer service at any other store, you'd be wrong. Stop into our store in Louisville and see what great deals we have. Follow us on our Facebook page at Half Off Store to see super specials. Why pay full price? Come in and experience the Half Off and Out by Store in Louisville, next to the Medicine Center Pharmacy. Hi, Paul White from the Medicine Center Pharmacy. In these difficult days, please stay calm and make sure your medical and health care supplies are well stocked. Make sure you have Kleenex, acetaminophen or Tylenol, ibuprofen or Advil, Mucinex, Robitussin or Dayquil, cough drops, maybe even a humidifier or a vaporizer. You can also just turn the shower on hot and sit in the bathroom breathing in the steam. How about vitamin D and a probiotic? And a good multivitamin like Linus Pauling Super Multivitamins that you'll find only in the medicine center pharmacies. So take care of yourselves and don't stress about the coronavirus. Make sure you get plenty of rest and plenty of healthy food. The Medicine Center Pharmacy, Canton, Louisville, Minerva, and New Philadelphia. Yes, we are open. We are open. The Medicine Center Pharmacies and the Half Off and Out by Store in Louisville are open. Some great services are still in play. Our drive through windows, curb service, and our enhanced delivery service. Our stores are fully inventoried and fully staffed for your convenience. 13 pharmacists to help you with your medications and over-the-counter products. So don't hesitate to visit us or use one of our services. Medicine Center Pharmacies in Canton, Louisville, New Philadelphia, and Minerva. You're listening to News Talk 1480 WHBC and Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy. Now here's your host, Paul White. Welcome back to Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy. We are in our final section of the program this morning, and, and we've got a lot more to cover. So, Well, I thought it would be a good idea if we repeated your cardiovascular line. While we were on the break, I brought up your Mercy Cardiovascular Institute web page interface that you mentioned, and I'm going to make sure we put a link to that in our comments when we post our, our show notes so that listeners can know where to find that easy. Um, your the cardiac twenty four seven line is the phone number is two three four two zero three three five three five. Have you had any experiences so far where you've really been able to make an impact with some patient care where before you have not? Do you have any story you wanted to share about someone who took advantage of that service and and really is happy they did? Well, I think the uh, line is so very new and it's still in development. Um, we have had some phone calls uh, just inquiring about the the practice itself. Um, so I think, you know, going forward, I think we'll see more of those patients that will be calling in with issues that we certainly will have an impact probably, you know, after hours. Um, but, uh, yeah, certainly I, I think going forward we'll see uh, some improved benefit there. Okay. How can our listeners learn more about the cardiac services at Cleveland Clinic Mercy Hospital? I think accessing your link is, is awesome. Uh, thanks for putting that online for us. Um, if the patient uh, needs a referral to uh, Mercy Cardiovascular Institute, they should go to their primary care provider and get that referral. Um, they can call for appointments at 330-588-4676. But I think, you know, getting information, the best thing to do is to go online. You can do a simple Google search for Mercy Cardiovascular Institute, and it takes you right to uh, the web page. So they can see the patient or the cardiologist pictures, uh, get the background on each of the providers. Um, and it's, it does have a lot of uh, information on there. So Dan, this merger has to add a huge amount of complexity to the um, system. I mean, there's over a hundred Cleveland Clinic facilities. So am I right about that? Uh, um, I'm not sure about the number of facilities, Paul, but, you know, it's not actually uh, complicated for us right now. Uh, Mercy Cardiovascular Institute is still operating the same way that we have previously. Uh, Cleveland Clinic is bringing additional resources to us. Uh, going forward, we may make changes to our practice later on, but right now we're the ship's full steam ahead, just the way we've been going. Uh, the addition of the 24-7 line is, is very new, so we're getting that off the ground and running. Um, but, yeah, ultimately, uh, day-to-day business and practice has not changed significantly with Cleveland Clinic coming in so far. Um, we really look forward to some of the uh, uh, benefits from the electronic health record that they'll be bringing to us eventually. Um, 
But uh, yeah, so far they've been allowing us to keep doing what we're doing. I'm sure the mere size and and complexity of the Cleveland Clinic um, uh, tying in, you know, with Mercy, that there's just all kinds of things available that just weren't available before, um, particularly super special, you know, things. So, um, certainly, and I know the Cleveland Clinic has been top notch in, in cardiac for years, and and. Um, you know, I would assume that that really has added some things to to Mercy that really are amazing. So, um, yeah, the services here at uh, uh, Cleveland Clinic Mercy uh, Hospital haven't changed uh, in the short term. However, you know, the ease of referrals is probably going to be a lot easier. Um, certainly, there's uh, some specialties to cardiology that we don't have here that. Uh, we refer out the Cleveland Clinic already, um, so that process really hasn't changed. But uh, I think maybe the, the it is streamlined somewhat. But uh, yeah, we've we've utilized Cleveland Clinic for years. So you know, so, I was around I was around years ago for the first heart transplants. Okay, where are we on that? I mean, are, is there much transplanting being done or, these days? There's, um, we don't. Still, Go ahead, Chrissy. Sorry, there's still transplanting being done, but it's just not done at our facility. When patients have advanced heart failure, we refer them out to Cleveland Clinic for a potential heart transplant. We don't really work that out there, but there is definitely still heart transplants taking place um, okay. at bigger, larger facilities. You, you just don't hear about it anymore. And I, I, there was a big thing years ago when that uh, doctor in uh, South Africa transplanted a mm. Jarvis, I think it was a Jarvis heart or something like that. Um, and that was a really big deal, but <laughs> you just don't hear much about it anymore. So anyway. All right. Well, we've got about three minutes left. Do you both want to share what you hope the biggest takeaway for our listening audience is today to make sure they take care of their heart health and take advantage of services at Canton Mercy? Yeah. So basically we just want them to take away, just follow up with your PCP, make some life challenges, Style changes, be a cardio cardiologist if you need to, and to realize really how important it is to take care of yourself and your cardiovascular health. Um, we only have one precious life to live, and what a tragedy it would be for it for us not to care for it. Hmm. And if you want to add on that, sure. Uh, I I just want patients to know that uh, we are here for them at uh, Cleveland Clinic Mercy Cardiovascular Institute. We're here twenty four seven with the addition of the uh, access line now. Um, however, keep in mind that the 24-7 line is not for emergencies. Um, if patients are having new or worsening chest pains, they need to utilize the emergency system just like they always have in the past. Call 911 and seek medical treatment. Why don't you hit us with that phone number again for your 24-7 line uh, for Mercy patients? Yeah, the, the number is 234-203-3535. Um, to get into the form to fill out, uh, just go to cantonmercy.org, uh, do a quick search for cardiology. It takes you right to that page. Scroll down, and the form is right there to fill out. 234-203-3535. Thanks to Dan Harvey, physician assistant, and Christy Coffey, nurse practitioner. We'd like to remind our listeners, if you suspect you have a medical issue, please contact your health care provider. Thanks to our sponsors, Cleveland Clinic, Mercy Hospital, and Studio Arts and Glass, and of course, our technical producer, J.T. Angela As always, we thank you, our listeners, for joining us on Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy. Have a healthy week, and we'll see you right here next Friday on News Talk 1480 WHBC. We'd like to remind our listeners that our program is available on our podcast. Use your favorite podcast app and go to the App Store and look for Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy, and we'd appreciate if you'd subscribe. Thank you for joining us for this edition of Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy and your hosts, your pharmacists, Paul White and Brad White. Remember, you can get more information right now at MedShopRx.com. That's M-E-D-S-H-O-P-R-X.com. Be sure to join us next Friday at this time for Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy.
The preceding program was sponsored by the Medicine Center Pharmacies. They say nothing's free in this world. Well, our website is. A monthly subscription? That's not us. No paywall here. Free and easy. That's our website, whbc.com. It's filled with local news, sports features, and schedules whenever you want it. Podcasts, pictures, videos, and more all at whbc.com. You can put your debit card away. We're free. Just turn us on. 1480 WHBC. Just turn us on.